I think there's a big one in here, boys and girls. Whoa! Ah, that one bit me. Wow, I did it. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. In fact, welcome to a video I never thought I would ever be making. Of course, the UK is locked down uh, to prevent the spread of this virus. And, you know, a lot of people are suffering. This is a terrible time. And um, yeah, my thoughts with anyone who may be affected. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get through all this as quickly as possible. I've been isolating now with my family for a couple of weeks down here in the South Hams. And I'm very fortunate that my house is literally in this field. It's a very big field, but it takes me about five minutes to walk across the field and get down to the creek. You might just be able to see the creek down there. So, of course I can't go spearfishing. That would mean, you know, driving on the road with a boat, which isn't really essential travel. But we're allowed to get out for an hour's exercise. So I've been stomping across this field down here to the creek and I found this really cool little spot to do a little bit of coastal foraging. Quite an interesting structure I've just seen out there on the mud flat. So I'm going to make my way out to that, whatever it is, forage around, see what I can find, and uh, yeah, catch up with you in a minute. Oh, guys, sorry, it's really windy, but on my way out to this uh, little structure, I've just seen something really interesting. But if you can see down here, so this here, and one there, and here. One there, one there, there. They are literally everywhere. These are gaper clams. And what has happened, I think, is that the southwesterly wind has come right up here. There's quite a big fetch here for the creek. And because we've had such strong storms, it's whipped up the bottom. And these gaper clams really don't like um, too much sediment in the water. They can't survive if there's too much sediment in the water. So I think this is a classic example of what you call a mass mortality in biology. And they really are just dead everywhere. It's nice and firm here. Look, there's another one. Never, you're never far away from a dead gate clam. There we go. There's an oyster. Nice. Wow, look at this. Look at that. I wonder what it is. So, got my first oyster, Pacific oyster. It's not a native, the natives are much flatter and much prettier. You can see there's some huge rock oysters, Pacific rock oysters on the structure, whatever it is. Need to be damn careful of the edges, they're incredibly sharp. I once found that out when I walked back from a beach party in bare feet. Wow, look at them all. Everywhere. Where's my oyster? There she is. Right, let's see if I can find a few more oysters. So, there is Telltale Hole. I can't see any ragworm stuff around it if we can find a clam. Oh, there he is. So there's a gaper that is alive. 
That's good to see. Yeah, I can clean them off a bit for you. Oh. So. But it's knowing the difference between the holes. That one might be a ragworm hole. Let's see. Yeah, that's a ragworm. And basically the burrow is down like that. That's just a cockle. God, it's a muddy old business, this uh, estuary foraging. Yeah, small cockle. So, sorry about the wind, but I have just found a beautiful native oyster. There he is. Look at, look at my hands. Look at my hands. There he is. Ah, it's just a shell. Keep trying. Well, there's scallop shells here too, which, su which suggests on a spring low, you could probably get some scallops out, as you can see. That's a, that's a pretty good sized scallop as well. Look at all those shells. Wow. Oh, hands in another muddy hole. Could it be another gaper? Yes. Gaper clam number two. Oh, there's another. Gaper number three. That one. Nope. When you get this wrong, you're just sticking your hand into deep mud. Something just tells me there's something living under this rock. It's probably not going to be a lobster, but that's going to be offering a lot of protection. Oh! Look at that. Whoopsie. Sorry, matey. Don't want to hurt you. Look at that. Little Blenny. Oh, there's one there. Look at them all. Whoa! Don't worry. Settle down, settle down, guys. Look at them all. Wow! Look at them all. Look at the colours on that one. Amazing. Ah! That one bit me. That one bit me hard. Ah! That one bit me. There's another one over here. So there is. One, two, three, four, five. Look at them all. It's a school. Come back, mate. Right, they really want their home back. Right, careful. That goes back. I'm gonna put an oyster here so I know they don't get hurt. Perfect. It's a little whole, the whole family. Amazing, amazing. Well, folks, this was completely unplanned, but you know, 20 minutes or so, just having a little forage on the mud flats here has yielded some food. I'm kind of pretty muddy now. My pockets, my pockets are literally just full of mud because, well, these shells came out of the mud. But we have three gaper clams, two cockles. I did have more cockles, but I put them into a puddle to wash them. Yeah, I lost them. Um, got four oysters. This one's quite big. 
and some sea beet as well. So I'm gonna take this home and just, you know, cook up a little meal. Why not? It looks delicious. And uh, I will probably have to change first, but then we'll get cooking. See you there. So Chloe, what are these here? Do you know? That's a what? They're oysters. Oysters. And Daddy's gonna put these in an oyster soup. Would you like some oyster soup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you will. Okay, so I made it home and um, I did spend uh, about two or three more minutes walking along the creek and I did find this one hole and there was an absolutely massive gaper clam in it. Here it is. Look at that. That's a clam! So that's a gaper clam, Chloe. Gaper clam! Gaper clam. Or I think they're sometimes called steamers. So you can see, originally I was finding ones that size. And then look. That is a pretty decent sized gaper clam. Um, well, I have no idea really because maybe I'll look up the sizes later. So, my job now is to open the oysters. I'm going to fry down some onions, put some lobster stock in the pot, and then um, I'm going to cook the oysters for a couple of minutes. You excited, Chloe? Yeah. Well, it is time to open these oysters. I've just brought them outside so no one gets hurt. I'm gonna go for the old screwdriver technique. I think you need to get your screwdriver in at the hinge. And once you've broken the hinge, you're in. So let's go. There we go. And it pops open. And I'll do the, I'll finish the rest of it with a knife. Peel the uh, oyster away from the top shell. Four oysters, ready to go. Hello. So I'm going to scrape all the oyster meat into this bowl. That is all edible. So I must admit, I've never seen inside a Pacific oyster before and they do look a bit funky. However, I'm actually really excited. I've never eaten oyster before. I've never, I don't really like to eat any fish or, or seafood I haven't caught myself. So this is my first time. So my plan is I'm gonna fry down some onions. I'm gonna add some lobster stock, maybe a little bit of cubed potato and kind of make an oyster soup. That's my plan. Onions are caramelized, not burnt. I'm gonna add some lobster stock. Ah. So just before I put the oysters in, I'm gonna add some uh, kind of chopped up sea beet, a couple of sprigs of marsh samphire, I'm just making this up as I go along really, but all that stuff is really good for you, full of vitamins and minerals. This is gonna be one healthy meal. Dash of cream, just a bit, don't much. So I'm gonna let that simmer for about three or four more minutes, let the cream reduce down a bit. And then, I'm going to add these beauties. Wow. I did it. I did it. The oysters are there. What is this madness? I'm going to stir them in. Look at them. How dare they enter my soup. Wow. Okay. Stomach's rumbling. The oysters in the soup, there's no turning back. Look at that. That's quite an aesthetically pleasing dish, is it not? Mmm. Mmm. 
the flavours. It's like lemon zest. Look at that. That I just rip, ripped it out of the bank by hand. Mmm. Mmm. And an oyster. Look at that. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Oh, it's so good. That's it for today's video. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, this was delicious. It's, I'm eating it straight out of the pan, you know. Sea beet, oysters, potatoes, onions. Mm. I have to tell you, that's one of the nicest meals I've ever cooked. Absolutely amazing. Look, um, if you like the video as a kind of replacement to spearfishing and underwater foraging, please give me a thumbs up and, you know, maybe leave me a comment. Likewise, you know, please feel free to say, look, Joe, it's not your thing. Um, that's fine as well. You know, let me know. Any feedback's appreciated. Hope everyone's staying safe and, you know, making their best of lockdown. And um, hopefully we can, you know, be out of this mess as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, my thoughts are with everybody. I hope everyone's well and... Um, you know, let's get through this, let's follow the rules, and uh, yeah, catch you very soon for another video. Ciao. I think there's a big one in here, boys and girls. Here it comes. That is a good size gaper.